What is going on, everybody? My name is John Hammond. It has been a hot minute since I posted a video, so I wanted to bring this to you. Uh, this is actually a request. An individual, uh, Mohammed, had asked me, Hello, dear. Can you help me? I want to write a function through the function get image from a specific path to a particular image in the computer, and the output will be a table as following. The first column will be the colors in the picture in hexadecimal code, and the second column will be how many times it's repeated in the image. Okay, so this isn't extremely difficult. Uh, we'll just burn through it here. And uh, I needed a couple images to be able to do this, right? So he wants a table, which has the... Um, we can we can use a, a function, I'm sorry, a module or library called pretty table, which I think is a built-in. I didn't have to, at least I don't remember ever installing it. Um, there are plenty of others. There's tabulate, there's text table, there's other things, but pretty table I think is simple and easy enough. And we'll use pill obviously to work with the image, and I'll use the collections.counter uh, submodule, I guess in that case, to go ahead and actually Maybe, I don't think submodule is the right word for that either. It's just something in the collections module that allows us to get the count of all of those pixel colors. So let's go ahead and do that. I wanted an image to work with. I originally just used my desktop background, but as you can see, there is a lot of color in that. So be warned that you're going to have a lot of output if you use it on a bigger image. It's obviously going to take a lot more time to run as well. So I went to Google and I just kind of searched for something like a QR code. Um, but that didn't work because it was just the black and white channels, black and white. I went for and I found this guy, and that's an 1,000 by 1,000 image, so not extremely huge, not extremely small either. So I just went ahead and saved that image as, like, I, I called it qr.jpg in that case earlier when I was testing because that's just what I had with the file name I was working with, so let's go ahead and do that. Sublime text still open, cool. So I had called this Mohammed.py uh, earlier, so I'm going to have to overwrite that, or I removed it. Sweet. I'll use this in Python 3, because the internet will yell at me if I don't, and we'll go ahead and import image from pill. Import. We also want counter from collections, and we also want that pretty table. So import pretty table. So the first thing you're going to want to do is obviously open up that image. I'll use qr.jpg in my case. Uh, IMG, you can give it whatever variable name you want or whatever object name you want. The real thing, important thing that we want is get the actual data out of it, so image.load. And if you want to loop through all that data, you need to know the size of it. So that's actually the IMG object, not the data object. But you can say size is equal to width and height, width are also equal to image.size. Cool. So now we can start to loop through it. I will create a colors list so I can keep track of all those things. And we'll do for x in range of width, and the same thing for y in range of height. Y in range of height. Cool. And now we can go ahead and get the color out of it. So we'll just say colors, or data, sorry, in this case, x, comma, y. And then let's uh, just to make sure we're actually getting that data, we'll go ahead and print that color. So I will use Python 3 on Muhammad.py. And that didn't do anything for me. So let's take a look what we got wrong. X, Y. And now that runs. Very weird. 255, 255, 255. Gradually, get a li occasionally getting colors. Good enough. Now let's go ahead and maybe I just didn't save it earlier. That's funny. Let's go ahead and create the hexadecimal representation of these colors. So we can do that with some list comprehension. Um, we can just go ahead and loop through C for C in color, and we'll take the hexadecimal value of this, right? So let's go ahead and print that out to take a look at, make sure we're getting the values that we're expecting. 0xff, 0xff, etc., etc. Um, eventually we'll get zeros in there, and that'll just be 0x0. So we have two things that we kind of need to account for. The 0x in the start can go ahead and be sliced off. So two colon, just to get that zero X cut away. And then we want to write justify it with a zero in case it's a single character, a single byte. So let's go ahead and dot R just, and then two, and then we'll fill it with zeros to make sure that it's actually the value that it should be. Now, if we look at our black colors, all those zeros should still be zero and everything else for the single colors. Perfect, let's go ahead and join those together with an empty list, I'm sorry, empty string. And then let's just tack on our little hashtag pound sign there to denote that that is the hexadecimal color. So now we can say colors dot append hex color 
Perfect. And now we should have in the colors list a lot of those colors. So now let's use counter to go ahead and determine how many of them that we have. Uh, I'm actually going to create my pretty table here and now because that will allow us to actually get the display that we want. So pretty table dot capital pretty and capital table. And then you can define with a list the header values that you kind of want for your row. So I'll say uh, color and then count. So now we'll go ahead and loop through what we will return from the counter. So let's say color and count in counter of hex colors, or just colors in this case, the variable, dot items. And now we can add that as a row to our pretty table. So add row, and it takes a list, so color and count. And that's all we need to do, because we're just simply adding that to our table. Now we can print out our pretty table object, and we should be good to go. So let's run this. It takes a little bit of time to process through that image, but as you can see, we have a table now with the color and the count, all in hexadecimal. So again, if you were to run this on something that's a significantly larger image with a lot more color, it's going to take a lot of time. Um, I don't know entirely the use for this, but I wanted to explain, okay, this is how you can do it. Maybe this is good for quick and easy analysis or something. But as you can see, it's taking a long time to process through the image, and once we get output returned to us, it will be a lot. Um, I'm, I'm even building the hype up now. Okay, there. Now we've got many, many rows to this table. Uh, my terminal's buffering for a good amount of time. So maybe that will be useful to you somehow, but uh, that is how you do that. Um, pretty table, I think it's pretty neat. It was a good excuse for me to take a look at it, but it's super simple. All you need to do is just define the header values and then add rows as needed and just print it out because this is, the object will go ahead and draw itself on the screen for you. So that is that. Hope you enjoyed this. Uh, if you did like this video, please do like, comment, and subscribe. Join our Discord server. There's a link in the description. It's a cool community full of CTO players, programmers, and hackers. A lot of smart people there, certainly much smarter than me. Uh, and if you would like to support, please check me out on Patreon. Thanks so much. See you in the next video.